<coughs> so what we're going to do first is we're just going to take a quick overview of what we've got. Um, if I go to the scene and just quickly test the game, I've, I'm using the template currently, uh, which is basically removes all of the code to do with uh, the enemy functionality. So with that, you know, we can have m most of the game working without us having to reprogramming it, but still have the flexibility to have our enemies not doing anything. So what you'll probably see, which will probably cause the game to crash very soon, is that these characters uh, at the top of the level are just stacking and stacking and stacking. And we need to make them do something, because otherwise the game's going to crash, which I'm going to close it ahead of that happening. Um, yeah, we're going to make them move in various ways. So on the right-hand side we have the pug, the, uh, a bulldog kind of thing that is, is spawned. We're going to set that one up first. Ooh, sorry. Um, so we're going to go to actor types and we're going to set up a basic enemy type. Now, what we're going to do with this is we're going to, like, when you're setting up your player, most of the kind of ways that you would set that up would be with something like an input based event. But obviously, we're not wanting, we're not going to be controlling our enemies with keys. We're going to be using time to do that. So if we go to flow, and time, we can essentially create time-based triggers to make things happen. Uh, for now, what I'm going to do is if uh, I'm just going to nip over to the uh, level, and I'm just going to get rid of the two other options from the scheme of things. So we're just working with. Uh, the enemy basic at the moment. Um, the reason I've done that is just so when we're testing it we don't end up lagging out the level with all you know th those enemies laying, overlaying one another. Um, so going back to the enemy basic, I'm just going to quickly save this. The first thing we're going to do is we've, as I said, we've set up this every one second checker. Now the reason we've done this in a when created event is because the initial, uh, if we did this as an update event, what would happen is it would be checking every millisecond for, you know, something happening. And then it would run this event every millisecond, this every one second event. So it, it will just essentially freak out because it'll be constantly running this command by setting it to a when created event will only in you know run this chunk of code once but by putting a loop in we can set it to a repeatable rate which isn't ridiculously fast like an update event so what we're going to do first just a very basic thing we're going to go to motion and we're going to set its speed along the x-axis. Now this at, at first we're gonna do something very simple and this is this is kind of how you get your kind of dynamic look to your characters moving is we're gonna apply a random number. Random numbers are really really good at kind of giving the illusion of a, of a different experience each time. Uh, there's a particular buzzword around at the moment called procedural which sounds super fancy and super technical and really hard to do, but literally, procedural is just a fancy word for random. Uh, so, for example, what I've done is I've set this value to a random number between negative 50 and 50. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to choose a random direction every one second for this enemy, uh, which will mean that they should theoretically... Uh, go in various ways and they'll take different routes through the level. Uh, so, you know, one might only shuffle a little bit and drop down three floors. Uh, one might shoot across. Um, another might, you know, bash into the wall and then move towards the edge and then bash into the wall again. Uh, <laughs> it'll probably look a little bit ridiculous. 
So you can see that the, these are all taking kind of completely different routes through the level with some, you know, similarity, but most of them kind of changing as they kind of move through the environment. You'll also notice that this is beginning to lag out. The reason for that is because uh, the way that the spawning was calculated before was that it would choose a number between one and three and then spawn one of those actors based on whether it was one, two, or three. With this, it's spawning... Uh, uh, you know, uh, one type of enemy every three seconds, uh, and these have a little trouble getting down or going off the level, which is causing the game to lag a little bit. So I've just increased that number from one to th every three seconds, which should hopefully stabilize the game. Let me just quickly check that there's no other versions of it open. now. there isn't. Okay. So now that we've set up uh, essentially just a random, you know, randomly moving enemy, what I want, <laughs> nice, is uh, this enemy to face the direction that it's traveling in. Because at the moment it's just kind of doing like a, a moonwalk or, you know, just sliding about, not changing animation, uh, you know, none of that stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep track of its speed and then use that uh, to basically, um, let me just go back to it, change which way it faces and change the animation it's currently playing. Uh, so for that, I'm going to use an if function. And this is basically going to uh, be a, a less than or equal to, sorry, sorry, a less than or greater than uh, value measurer. Now the value that we're going to be checking is going to be the x speed of our actor, of, of you know the enemy, and we're going to be checking to see see if it's greater than zero. Uh, now what is going to happen if this is the case? Uh, it's going to face the character right. Um, now you might remember from previous tutorials we usually do this with. Um, a tweening method. Uh, what you can do is bear with me a sec. You can find it under actor and tweening, and you can alter the scale of your character. So I'm gonna because it's already facing right. I'm gonna make it set to 100% if its speed is less than sorry is is greater than zero. Uh, and that way, what will happen is is if that's the case, it'll it'll move right. I'm now going to do an otherwise statement for if it's the opposite, if it's less than zero, and in turn I'm going to make it go the other way, or at least face the other direction. And I'm only going to do this on the on the width rather than the height because otherwise it will flip the character upside down. And then there's the one other scenario. Now, in the current setup that we have, we don't have anything for zero. Um, because we're not going to want to, you know, we're not going to want to change its direction based on what speed it is. But what we might want to do is change its animation. So if we go to actor and draw, we could switch the animation. Now, if we go to appearance, we have idle and walking. Uh, I'm going to name this idle. I'm going to name this walking. Make sure it's, it matches because it's case sensitive. So if it's moving in either direction, so if it has, if its x speed is greater than or less than zero, we're going to set it, its animation to walking. But otherwise, we're going to set it to idle. So now if we test that, you should have a basic enemy that will move left and right and in turn change direction and alter its animation based on which way it's facing. It should look pretty cool. I'll just give it a quick moment. Um, and what I'm going to do... There we go. So enemy changes direction. 
jogs along. And yeah, can be killed and kills. But to be fair, that, that's unrelated, that's already been added. Um, so yeah, uh, what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to just very quickly check to see if there's anything else. I'm 95% sure that this, for this character itself, covers everything that I was wanting to cover. There might also be the, the factor of changing the colour. Um, of, of the actor in question, but to be fair, I have covered that in the boxing tutorial, so I might leave that out. Um, but just give me a quick sec. I just want to make sure 100% that this is, is the case. Yeah, that's pretty much everything covered, with the exception of, of changing the color randomly uh, once it's been created, but uh, it, that isn't necessarily to do with movement or behavior. Well, I suppose it's to do with behavior, but I'll be covering it in the next video when we're talking about uh, the enemy which is going to change direction when it collides with tiles. So for this video, I'm going to wrap this up here. Um, and yeah, the, the next video we're going to cover directional enemies, which are going to be, you know, if uh, you know one of the actors collides with the wall. Uh, change to face another direction and we're also going to tweak things like the uh, the speed that it moves and change the scale and we'll also change the color as well as part of that uh, so yeah check back in a little bit and I uh, should uh, you should be able to follow that video